Welcome to AutoSense, the world's leading community for ADAS and autonomous vehicle technology development. We create best-in-class events, training, and information for the purpose of connecting the global community of engineers, scientists, and other automotive industry experts. We are thrilled to welcome back today Wade Appleman, Chief Business Officer of OWL Autonomous Imaging. Wade, good to see you again. Welcome. Great, Carl. Thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to chatting. Yeah, Wade, and I loved our discussion that we had in May in Detroit for AutoSense 2023. Tell us, what's the latest uh, since we last spoke in Detroit? Sure. So let me reintroduce OWL Autonomous Imaging really briefly here uh, to remind uh, people that are listening uh, of what uh, what we build uh, and what our go-to-market strategies are here. So OWL is a thermal and computer vision company. Uh, what that means is we are building an HD thermal digital image sensor or focal plane array. Uh, so we are actually building a thermal camera and uh, we're doing this with HD resolution. And we'll talk about why that really matters uh, in the future, uh, future parts of this interview. But we're also doing computer vision algorithms, which are uniquely designed for thermal. So we do classification CNNs and ranging CNNs and fusion and object segmentation. Uh, all of this uh, software and the, and the associated thermal hardware is really going after our target markets, which are in the automotive industry, both for L2 plus ADAS, L3, L4 autonomy. And then this also has applicability in the industrial construction and agricultural segments as well. Uh, we based in uh, Rochester, New York, uh, founded in 2019. And by the way, I will give a little plug of the last year's award. Uh, last year's AutoSense, we won uh, the uh, uh, Best Hardware uh, Implementation uh, Gold Award winner. Uh, so we're uh, looking forward to coming back uh, uh, to the event uh, after winning that award last year. Yeah, Wade, and that award certainly well-deserved. Uh, in late May, again, right around the time that we talked for AutoSense Detroit, and I'm going to read verbatim here from the NHTSA website from a, a press release late May 2023. And I quote, NHTSA announced a notice of proposed rulemaking that would require automatic emergency braking and pedestrian AEB systems on passenger cars and light trucks. The proposed rule is expected to dramatically reduce crashes associated with pedestrians and rear end crashes. So again, that from the NHTSA website from their press release late May of this year, 2023. But Wade, that has relevance to the work you're doing at OWL Autonomous Imaging. Can you elaborate a little bit more on these NHTSA rules and, and where that fits into what you're offering the market? Sure. The NHTSA rules are actually going to become a mandate. And I think that's really important for the audience to understand the difference between sort of a, a, a requirement of testing versus a mandate. If automakers can't pass these new uh, pedestrian nighttime safety uh, mandates, they won't be able to sell their vehicles, right? Full stop, right? Uh, so the, so I think that that this mandate is something that uh, is going to be really important for the industry to, to understand. And, as, and they're taking it quite seriously. Uh, this notice for proposed rulemaking uh, was uh, signaled um, back in the, uh, in the winter time that it was coming. Uh, they came out in June with the, uh, it's, I think, a 105-page document that describes what's going to be required. Uh, it's been open for comments now for a few months. I think right now they've had almost 6,000 uh, submissions for comments uh, to the uh, uh, to the NHTSA website uh, where, where they're receiving those comments. Uh, but it's really important that we understand why this is happening as a, as a starting point. And that's because over uh, the last uh, 10 years, uh, the number of pedestrian deaths have actually increased uh, by 77%. And in 2022, it's the highest level of pedestrian fatalities in 41 years in the United States. I mean, just think about that, an increase when we're trying to get everything safer. NHTSA has oftentimes been focused on um, occupants and occupancy safety, airbags, seatbelts, things to protect crumple zones, things to protect the, the occupants in a vehicle. They are finally starting to really get out and talk about safety of pedestrians outside the vehicle. What they also really highlight in this uh, in this notice of proposed rulemaking is 76% of those deaths are occurring at night or in dark, harsh lighting conditions. 
So they're coming out and being very specific that uh, testing has to occur with a very low amount of light. Uh, I think it's uh, 0.2 lux of light is the latest uh, proposal. Vehicles have to be traveling at a certain speed in order to come to a stop. I believe it's almost 60 miles an hour, which I think will probably come down a little bit. And um, we're seeing this, uh, these rules not only occurring uh, in the United States, but we're seeing um, government regulations throughout Europe and Asia coming in that are also going to dictate nighttime uh, pedestrian safety. And the challenge is most of the sensors that are out there today that are being used for classification of, of, of uh, objects uh, are based on RGB image sensors. And RGB image sensors, visible light or, or illuminated, require illumination of some level. And, and they just don't work when there's no light. So a new technology, a new camera technology is really going to be coming, uh, we believe, in favor uh, to the market. Uh, and that's going to be based on, on thermal, which, which detects radiated energy and requires no light at all. Wade, as we've been discussing this, I, I keep thinking, and I'm sure we've all seen these videos before on a closed course with the target and the test dummies, but those videos are usually in the middle of the day, right? But yeah. that test dummy, is is that a universal target, a universal test dummy? Can you use that? Can you, can you take the daytime test dummy and use it at night or does something need to change there? Is there a difference? Yeah, Carl, the uh, challenge with the dummies is, is you need to have a, a, a thermal signature or heated target. Um, sure, you can see a uh, thermal imaging, which uses, again, radiated energy, uh, a target that isn't heated uh, will still show up in, in thermal. There's still a relative temperature. But in order to make the, uh, the environment uh, as, uh, as realistic as possible, uh, we do want to see NHTSA add a requirement uh, for a heated uh, dummy test. And they sell these heated dummies. Weirdly, there's not a lot of standards for that. So there's a whole standards initiative uh, that is coming up to define uh, what a heated target uh, needs to uh, uh, look like and how it needs to be developed. But uh, we think that uh, NHTSA would be uh, well on, uh, well served to, to add uh, uh, to this uh, notice of proposed rulemaking uh, the requirement for for heated dummies. The the interesting part when you when you think about this is a heat signature of, of a human uh, appears in the thermal images in the thermal image almost as if that person is walking around with a retro reflective vest. It is absolutely amazing when you look at an RGB camera trying to do classification of a, of a of a person. Or, or, or an animal in the car versus uh, a, a thermal image. Uh, even in bright daylight, uh, these uh, pedestrians are, are well um, boundaried, if you will, uh, even at extended distances because of, of the heat signature it gives. So the thermal, uh, the thermal targets would be a huge advantage, uh, we think, uh, in, in the NHTSA uh, regulations. We're speaking today with Wade Appleman, Chief Business Officer of OWL Autonomous Imaging. Uh, Wade, as we're having this discussion, how is computer vision and AI impacted then as we move toward night vision? Right. So, so you do have to train your neural network on thermal images. Okay. You can't just take an RGB uh, training data set and, and have it instantly assume that it can recognize thermal images. Thermal images are coming in grayscale. They have different bounding edges. You're going to have a different ratio of, of false positives if you, if you aren't careful on, on training your neural network. So we've spent a lot of time creating thermal data sets that can train, uh, that are being trained based on, on, on thermal um, uh, images or thermal videos. So what we're able to do in this uh, screen that I'm showing you right now is this gives you an idea of, of the types of data you can get from your neural network from thermal. So in the upper left-hand side, you can see you can just get an intensity image. Uh, we can also do object segmentation and classification of the thermal image. We can give you a 3D object list or a bird's eye view. We can give you a SLAM uh, view. And then we can also do fusion uh, where you have to merge RGB and thermal cameras and do pixel level uh, fusion. So we're seeing a lot of requirement to, to tweak uh, the, the, the neural network, but it is still a pixel based 
um, uh, system. You are getting lots of, of point cloud data. You can do object detection. You can do object classification. You can even do ranging with thermal. Uh, the, the technology works just like an RGB camera, except that we give you uh, pixels of, of data at that uh, eight, uh, F of the radiated energy. And that really helps um, uh, distinguish the, the objects you're trying to classify in thermal. So you have to think about it both, the perception and the thermal coming together, with the common data set. And then, uh, and then we can demonstrate that now uh, with our proof of concept system. And that's one of the things we'll be showing at the AutoSense event is that, um, is that perception software uh, running in thermal. Yeah, so well said, Wade, and thank you for the visual assets there helping us get our, our mind around all of that. You know, our OEMs, are they starting to embrace night vision again? And if so, what what might be different this time around? Sure. So so night vision has been a, a term that has been around for, for maybe a decade plus. Uh, it had been sort of a... Uh, a, a side feature that had been used in high-end vehicles uh, to uh, maybe used uh, in, a, in a heads-up display or, or or some other display in the in the cockpit of the car uh, to show uh, nighttime scenes. It wasn't tied into the braking system and it had limited value uh, and and frankly uh, it was too expensive. Uh, so uh, we still see night vision in in that use case out, but we're seeing a market marketed change, uh, marked change, I should say, uh, in, in how OEMs are, are looking at night vision now. They're actually starting to look at it as an augmentation to the ADAS uh, L2 uh, suite. Uh, they're, they're starting to, we're starting to see active RFIs and RFQs from all of the major OEMs uh, that are looking to say, hey, we need to understand how thermal compares to RGB cameras. They're running real tests where they're uh, running these at night, uh, not just to see deer, uh, but to uh, or, or, or animals in a, in a country setting. They're actually looking to see how much better uh, thermal can work uh, in conjunction with RGB in bright light scenarios, in, in, in chaotic urban scenes, uh, in fog, in rain. And they're really starting to compare, uh, I think, actively uh, where does an RGB camera uh, work exceptionally well and when does a thermal camera add to the safety of the vehicle system? So we're seeing uh, a real, real change here. I think these NHTSA mandates are, are part of that. But I also think uh, there's been enough time now uh, where people are getting real life experiences with the current sensor suite of radar, RGB, in some cases LIDAR. And they're seeing not just uh, unique corner cases anymore, but real uh, examples uh, that happen frequently uh, where the uh, addition of a, th of a thermal camera is going to be important. The last thing that we keep hearing from OEMs all the time is get the cost down. How are you going to get the cost down? Can you get this to be um, uh, in low resolution, less than $100 in higher resolution? We may need it for uh, L3 uh, experiences. Uh, can you get it to be you know, in that $200, $250 range? And the answer is, yeah. That's what we're all about is bringing the cost of thermal down so it's cost effective in the auto to the automotive OEMs and give you the resolution you need in order to do that uh, object classification at, at further distance when you need lots of uh, pixels on target. So uh, a, a real uh, sea change, we think, is coming from the OEM community uh, really uh, starting this year. Yeah, that's fantastic, Wade. Uh, you know, having that accessibility there, driving the cost down, the accessibility of, of thermal, imaging, uh, thermal imaging for all the benefits that, of course, we, we just talked about. Um, Wade Appleman, Chief Business Officer for Owl Autonomous Imaging, longtime member of our AutoSense family. Uh, Wade, want to thank you for sharing your expertise and your thought leadership with us. I look forward to doing an interview here in the coming months again, just seeing where everything is headed and, and getting caught up on the latest with you uh, everything with uh, thermal imaging, the NHTSA rulemaking, and of course, the latest news with OWL Autonomous Imaging. So we'll look forward to that in the near future. But in the meantime, thank you for being with us today and uh, look forward to doing this again real soon. Great. Thanks, Carl. Look forward to seeing you in Brussels. For more in-depth interviews like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow AutoSense on LinkedIn. 
For more information on our world-class events, visit auto-sense.com. That's auto-sense.com. In Detroit, on behalf of AutoSense, I'm Carl Anthony. Thank you.